Was there any points during the period of filming over those three to five years that that you just think, oh, I'm never going to get this done? Uh, that was a discussion after the first day. As a creative, you're always looking to kind of do things that people haven't necessarily done in quite that way before and, uh, you know, kind of challenge the status quo a bit, which we really did with Indication Swim. I, I suppose failure is really just sort of a convoluted route to success. That there's a job that needs to be done that I want to do and, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and do that by any means available really yeah i mean there's no other experience i don't think other than theater that, that kind of comes close as you're, you're sat in a dark room with a load of strangers you've never met before and you're never going to meet again mm. it's sharing a kind of communal experience but at the same time it's all a different experience of watching this you know something up on the big screen and, and there's just a kind of magic to that which is why it's fantastic that it's going to be out on the 8th of march international women's day in cinemas uh, around the uk up on the big screen you know it, it's an incredible it's every filmmaker's dream really to have their movie in, in a cinema I think there was kind of an ethos on, on the film um, of kind of we would think what would Mercedes do. I mean, I had the time of my life making this film. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was an incredible experience, and you know, one that I'll, I'll definitely you know cherish. I'm on a mission to help the world to see success differently. Through sharing the stories of our guests, I hope to inspire those that listen. This is the Different Hats podcast, produced by H2 Productions. I hope you can join us on this journey. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about one of our sponsors, Nostos, an authentic experience of Greece right here in the heart of Hove. In a world brimming with dining options, finding that one place that captivates your palate and heart isn't always easy. It's about more than food. It's the stories, the ambience, the slice of another world. This is the essence of Nostos, an award-winning Greek restaurant. With traditional recipes passed down through generations, each dish promises a story and a piece of heritage. And Nostos is more than just a restaurant. It's a community contributor. Each dining experience supports initiatives close to their heart, from local charities to cultural events, enriching Brighton and Hove's social fabric. They also provide catering services, bringing Greek cuisine to your personal events. For a taste of Greece without leaving town, visit nostos-hove.co.uk. And when you do go, say Sam recommended the Feta Nests. Oh my God, they are amazing. Okay, welcome to another episode of the podcast. My guest this week is an award-winning British film director and screenwriter, best known for his upcoming professional feature debut, Vindication Swim. The film has undergone three years of production, with filming taking place in the English Channel itself, followed by a year of post-production at Warner Brothers, Delane Lee Studios. The biopic's development has been featured in the likes of Variety, Deadline, The Times and The Daily Mail, as well as being documented by BBC and ITV News. His passion for filmmaking began at a young age with the production of the World War II, The Long Road Home, made whilst at school and completed in 2017 when he was just 16 years old. The film garnered praise from New York critic Graham Fuller, who described the film as a miracle achievement for a schoolboy director. I'm delighted to welcome... Elliot Hassler to the podcast. Elliot, how you going, mate? I'm good, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Mate, listen, absolutely uh, absolutely awesome to have you. I remember we obviously met previously when you was a guest at uh, the breakfast event that we host. Um, we saw the trailer for the for the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and wow, just incredible to hear a little bit about your your story. And hopefully we're going to delve a little bit deeper into that and... and um, about your passions and stuff, and I've I've been really fortunate enough to um, have a preview of the film um, before, and wow, wow, thank I you. I think it's absolutely <laughs> amazing. So, look, mate, as always, we're gonna we're gonna jump straight in. So, um, with everyone's story, it's, it's got to start somewhere, right? You're yeah. you're a storyteller as a director and a screenwriter. So, um, <coughs> I just want to just in that, with our life in sixty seconds element of the podcast that we do, just tell me something a little bit about your childhood and what's helped shape who sits in front of me today? Um, 60 seconds, geez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I suppose the pinnacle kind of thing from my childhood that sort of put me to where I am was um, at primary school, there was sort of a week um, that they didn't do any lessons. They Instead, they, they got the whole class to make a film. Mm. Um, uh, we did like an adaptation of Lion, the Wish and the Wardrobe. And that was kind of my first experience of being in, in kind of the world of filmmaking and, and, you know, having that experience of holding a camera and shooting actors and, and things mm. like that and then making a film. And um, that was really kind of 
where I caught the bug as, as it was for, for filmmaking. And, uh, you know, since then, that's been, been my passion, really. So yeah, and definitely, you know, that was a childhood moment that, that certainly changed my Forever. life. Yeah, sure. So let's, I mean, look, building on from them, them that, that former years, so how old was you then when that, uh, when, when you done that, that first? Oh, I'd have been about nine or ten, I really? think. Yeah, it, it was just the primary school, you know, in, in Hove. Um, it was a really great scheme they did, and unfortunately, I don't think it's a it's a thing anymore. The teachers left who who, who had that thing set up, but it was a, you know it's one of those great schemes they have at school that isn't just about education. It's about kind of yeah. looking at different ways of you know, you know inspiring kids, which I think is great. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Well, we I talk a lot on here about sort of the education system, and actually there's part of it that's quite archaic isn't it and I, look, I get the fundamentals that we've got to have in place but actually there's such a wide range of skills mm. and things that people you know especially creative people i guess that maybe academically they don't follow that quite as well but you you've got that creative nature if you can tap into that there's great things can come of that right Oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't think that scheme helped anyone to, to pass an exam, but it, mm. it's inspired me in a sense to go and, you know, pursue my career. And, uh, you know, I guess you can trace kind of all of it back to that moment at school, which is, yeah. you know, well, that's surely what education and what, what school is all about, really, you know, yeah. is setting people up for the for the future. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. So and then so from that, is that like, did you have then just a clear focus that was there was no other option for you that was what what you wanted to follow and that was your dream and what you wanted to do uh, pretty much yeah I mean from that age I just began sort of making little films um just amateur ones with friends and family acting in them and, and that kind of thing which you know, they, they kind of got better as I as I made more of them and um yeah I never studied film or anything like that I'm all self-taught and, and then with World War II The Long Road Home that essentially was my film school you like um again it was it was an amateur production it was just friends and family that that were helping out there it's not really any professional actors in it we couldn't you know no one would would agree to be in like a 14 year old kids movie um <laughs> you know, it's damaged their careers but <laughs> I, I, I mean th there was no real um kind of aim other than you know just having fun making a film really with that one it didn't cost any money really and and, and that kind of thing so it was shocking really that it picked up distribution in the UK and in the US and that it actually did really well it was like the top 25 on Sky for a bit and then it was in the top 50 DVD sales in the UK which you know from when I started that at 14 you know 14 to 16 it was it was crazy that it ended up where it did and allowed me to kind of go on and do Vindication Swim. That's just so, so incredible I think such a great lesson I guess for for any like my kids are only eight and stuff like that but I, I always talk to them about finding your passion and something mm. that, that lights you up and excites you and I love hearing people's stories of, of finding that, that quite early on because you obviously did which which is great you found that, that, that so early on how was you like in school because you've had that focus then and that dream I guess and ambition to do that was school become secondary to you at that point was it just like oh, I just love making film and I want to and this is what I want to do I think school was always secondary for me even before that, to be honest. Um, I, I did pretty well at school, but it was not really for me the kind of the structure and the, the, the kind of the rules that they had in place. That was just, you know, it's not something that I kind of work with particularly well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I was always kind of looking forward to leaving school and having that kind of behind me. Um, I, I appreciate it's necessary. You know, it's a stepping stone and, and, and everything like that. You need to learn to read and write, et cetera, and, you know, have a basic yeah. grasp of those things. But um now, my passion was always in film, and, and the goal was always to, to, to get myself to a position where, you know, that would become viable. Yeah. And, and that was kind of, yeah, yeah, it for me, really, in terms of school. Oh, yeah, fair enough. And then, uh, so, so 14, <laughs> between 14 and 16, that's a young age to, to to make a film that's actually, like you said, got so much recognition, I guess. Like, where where, where did the inspiration for that particular film come from? Where, where um, So that one's based on... Uh, the story of my great grandfather, who was a uh, prisoner of war in Italy in the Second World War, and he um, he escaped from that camp, and then he, he did a, a march basically across Italy. I think the equivalent would be from about Brighton to Manchester was the distance that he walked, and so so he did that sort of in uh, in 1943 into 1944, um, walked into you know enemy behind enemy lines basically, and it evaded capture from the Nazis and. Uh, and then eventually made it home. Um, that was uh, sorry, it was a bit of a spoiler, really. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's essentially the story. Um, but, but but yeah, I, I mean, the, the film, you know, it's, it's a very kind of amateur thing. But it, it was it was nice to kind of have such a personal connection to that story. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah the world war ii subject is always popular um, yeah. people love that so um it was fun as well being you know sort of 14 16 messing around with like second world war uniforms and stuff was was enjoyable yeah yeah sure and what i guess like like you said that what i find fascinating actually listening to you talk is that you mentioned about being completely self-taught i mean what a great thing for people listening to to take on board and go actually anything in life we can go if we believe you don't need to go i've got to go and do this degree and it always puts up something in place you know an obstacle i guess in place to be able to do that but the fact that you've gone i'm just going to learn what what sort of things did you learn on that i I guess that, that making that film um, well, yeah, like you said, I didn't study film school, but essentially that film was my film school, school really. Yeah. Um, it, it was kind of the first experience I had making a film that was of a certain quality, really. Um, and, and, and yeah, it was just it was a learning curve in all different aspects because I did everything really on that one. There was not, you know, we even couldn't afford to pay people um, to, to do jobs like editing and, and, and filming it and things like that. So, you, you know, I kind of wore many hats, really, which kind of gave me an appreciation of all those different roles. Yeah. Um, which then obviously informs how you go on to do stuff in the future. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess definitely that's a gr- another great thing as well, isn't it? Like, and the same. I guess so many people relate that to can relate that to business in general. That the, the podcast itself is called different ads because as entrepreneurs, you, you know, starting a business, we you, you are the marketeer, you're the <laughs> you, mm. you know you're the accountant, you're the you know the sales guy. All of those things you have to you have to be all, everything to everybody almost like and. Um, but it does give you then an appreciation as like you say as you as a business develops similar with you with a, a, with, a, with film you, you you gauge every aspect of of what that looks like so then in form, so when you put your next one together you know what the editor's going to be going through you know what that person's going to be going through and and I guess that then enables you to become a better leader a better director potentially yeah, definitely yeah I, I mean you also know when people are trying to pull the wool over your eyes a bit as well <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, 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 so yeah. oh this is going to take this um no i shouldn't take that <laughs> well, exactly uh, you know i know i can do it in that amount of time so you, you know you can't get around that, that you know extra hours you know um but, but no, it's, it's definitely helpful uh, and you know, i think it definitely makes you a better director when you can understand all the different aspects of it. I mean, there's a you know there's a reason why Clint Eastwood and, and, and Robert Redford and those guys became such good directors because they had such an appreciation of how films were made before they yeah. sort of took that step that they you know that they, they did a really good job when when they, they took on the directing role. I guess about the support network ar- around you and enabling you to to do that. Cause what what did you? I guess your parents say, "Well, I'm going to be a filmmaker. I'm going to be a director. I'm going to go and." gonna go and do this what 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 was their take on that oh, they took it pretty well <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh no no I, I think they they noticed that i had kind of a talent for it um i, I mean I, you know when i kind of said it at 10 i guess you know all kids have the kind of you know everyone wants to be a footballer or an astronaut or, <laughs> yeah. or you know that kind of thing but then they saw there was kind of a quality to what i was doing as well so um now, they've been very supportive from from the outset. I mean, my, my dad's helped, you know, kind of make the films, helped organise the shoots and things like that. So, you, you know, I mean, he took on a producing hat with Vindication Swim, which has, you know, been been great. So yeah. it's been nice to kind of have this family kind of uh, collaboration yeah. uh, on, on the movies. Yeah, definitely. And, and the same with it, I guess anything in, again, I, I talk about it on here a lot about within business. And, you know, I've had people come on who from olympic champions to you know multi-millionaires who have started businesses etc mm. etc et but the, the key theme that's run for everything is having that surround yourself with good people right? and and i guess for, for you uh, starting something at such a young age but to have that family support as well is was is really key yeah definitely uh, you know it's led on to to uh to, to getting support from you know other people who i'm not you know related to other like yeah. uh, you know people within the business um you know like nicola piercy who's she used to be the president of lionsgate uk and europe for a new company um picnic entertainment she came with vindication swim you know she sorted out all our distribution and everything so you know there's been great partners that i found along the way sort of on this journey at different stages as well which yeah. you know have really sort of snowboarded and obviously kirsten uh, callahan who plays mercedes we, we, we now write together as well so, so you know you forge all these different sort of relationships with different people throughout the the journey which have all been fantastic you know yeah, yeah amazing and it, obviously you mentioned um obviously mercedes there and, and let, let's talk i guess a little bit about 
about vindication swim and and coming up like as I said I've had the I've had the privilege of obviously watching it which and, and, and being a big sea swimmer myself he was amazing to watch that and and stuff like that. but talk to me about what, what what drew you I guess to that story of of making that film I guess and, that, and talk to me about how you approached I guess the responsibility is quite a it's a big film to take on right so talk to me a little bit about about that yeah it was definitely an, an ambitious kind of uh de- debut professional feature <laughs> yeah, really yeah. filming out at sea um i mean that was one of the aspects that drew me to it um was the the challenge of that i mean spielberg is a big inspiration of mine and he you know talks about his terrible experience on jaws of filming out on the open water you know him saying don't do it really made me want to go and do it to, to be honest and really and what, film out what, at sea. Why, why why i just why? think the challenge of it i think it's nice to push yourself creatively like like doing a film just kind of in a room with sort of free actors or whatever i just think that's kind of dull it, you know it's not it's not pushing the, the boundaries of anything and i think as a creative you're always looking to kind of do things that people haven't necessarily done in quite that way before and uh, you know kind of challenge the status quo a bit which we really did with vindication swim filming out there um you know as a small production mm-hmm. on the water um that, that was a big challenge but but you know just mercedes story really i hadn't heard of her before um but before coming to the film um I stumbled across an article about her online and, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of her, which, you know, is, is a travesty really because she's such an incredible woman and what she did, you know, really should be celebrated and, and you know, shouted from the rooftops really because it was in the 20s and she's just faded from, from public memory. But hopefully with the film, you know, we can we can bring her back into kind of the public consciousness because, yeah, um, yeah the, the inspirational aspect was, you know, another big draw really. What she did, like I said, was incredible and, uh, you know, I really kind of resonated with her her resilience, her determination, her you know, her drive to to conquer the channel and, and pursue her dreams. Yeah, uh, look, hundred percent. I think for for me, how you've described it there really resonates. And some of the, the the key messages you take out, you look at that something I really try and promote on here. Something I talk, I guess, to my kids about on a daily basis about following your dreams is a, is a, a, a big thing. But within Within business as a whole, within life in general, resilience is the is one of the, the traits that we all need, right? To to try and achieve anything in life, and and it's such that the story as a whole it talks about failure to, and, and she is a highlights um, how resilient she was, and it was it's, it's incredible how many failed attempts she's had, and mm. um, and like you said, it's 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 strange because. I hadn't heard of her either, and someone that's a big swimming fan as well, but I hadn't really heard of that story. And like you said, hopefully, with what you you've achieved with it, is bringing that story back to life, right? But yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot, a lot of the, the the kind of ethos behind the film was to honour her and her legacy, and, and you know, show people how incredible she was, and, and you know, really kind of uh, like I said honour that um, basically through the film. But um, yeah, I mean, it's such a shame no one had heard of her. Yeah. Just, I mean, in a way, it was lucky because it meant I got to make the movie. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is a terrible shame. And uh, you know, you got to kind of ask whether that is because she's a woman that it was kind of dropped from the annals of history really because you hear about a lot of the, the men like captain webb is still pretty famous everyone knows you know him as the first man to swim the channel but but there's a lot of you know a, a much smaller recognition for the women that have done it yeah, yeah. and i guess look well, and we're, we're coming to a bit up i guess it's like as as a sign of society I mean, especially that that talking about challenges and things you face just like I'm going to swim the channel was a big challenge, right? But then as a woman as well, hmm. especially back in that time, I think that one of the great things a film does, it really captures the time of the, the you know, of the 20s and what that potentially looks like for, c- coming from a woman's perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, do, doing what she did back then, you, you know, it, it is astonishing as a woman in the 20s to be able to go out there. I mean, I mean, they were claiming it was impossible for women to swim the channel up to like 1926. She did it in 1927. Yeah. Um, so, so you, know, you know she she had a lot of barriers in in place not just the natural world and you know swimming in those waters mm. and, and crossing that but also all the societal pressures behind her and the, and the misogyny that she had to face so yeah it's just another element in how extraordinary she was really and um i mean that's why we're bringing the film out on international women's day is to um just you know really celebrate her as the the inspiration to women and uh, and yeah. things that she is amazing amazing well look, talk to me a little bit about uh, Cause like you said, already highlighting that you want to push yourself out of your comfort zone, which is, which is a great thing. I think you know again, 
I, I'm someone who likes to promote that as much as possible. I think that's where our growth happens, right? When we push ourselves a little bit. But for for you taking on such a big challenge like that, talk to me. I guess just share some of the some of the big challenges that you did face through filming and and what you sort of learned, I guess, from that, from those experiences. Um, well, I, I suppose that the big the initial big challenge w was filming out at sea and how are we going to do these swimming sequences, um, the sort of free swimming sequences throughout the film, without giving anything away. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, there's kind of these swimming sequences dotted throughout it. And, um, you know, each of them is different and has a different look. And it, it was, you know, how are we going to capture these authentically in, in a way that honours Mercedes and what she did? And, you know, the only real way to do that is to do it for real in the English Channel where Mercedes actually swam. Um <laughs> So that was what we did. And Kirsten Callahan, who plays Mercedes, did such an incredible job. I, I mean, she refused to have a body double. She did all the swimming herself. She trained for three or four months before the production started um, in open water swimming. She could already swim pretty competently, but, but you know, um, she, she needed to, to become Mercedes, one of the best swimmers, you know, that there has yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was a big challenge. And, you know, she, she really, you know, faced that tremendously and, and, and did a fantastic job. Yeah, wow. Yeah, she really did. You, you, like... I guess, I guess in in there as well, and the way it's filmed, and it, being someone that swims in the sea as well, you almost feel like you feel the cold with her when when she's mm. swimming that cold, and you're look, looking at it and the challenge of going it against that, and 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 almost as well the, the euphoria the first time when you sort of see the 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 white cliffs of Dover and mm. and coming into there, like you, you feel part of that journey with her, right? Well, that's great to hear, yeah, because, I mean, the, the whole ethos sort of from the behind the camera, you know, uh, perspective on the film was to really immerse the audience into Mercedes' yeah. world and put you right alongside her in the channel so it almost feels like you're crossing it with her. Yeah. Um, so that, that's great to hear that that, that came across for you. Yeah. Oh, mate, absolutely, absolutely. Um, look, I want to I stick with, with challenges as well. And uh, like, like I say, we've sort of highlighted a couple of key points there that, that you know, the film's a great portrayal of, of, of resilience and determination. Um, as I mentioned, she 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 had several failed attempts, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was um, on her eighth attempt was yeah. what, was when, when she made it. When yeah. she made it, yeah. Um, talk to me about your relationship with failure. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I mean, I, I suppose failure is really just sort of a convoluted route to success in, in, in a sense. You know, you're always going to have failures, and you're going to have to kind of meet those challenges and overcome them in order to get where you want to go no one's ever had a you know a perfect home run mm. uh, you know in in life and and got to where they have without having failed at, at places so you know i mean the film industry is very difficult you know there were days when we would go out there filming you know kind of on a small scale we'd go out we'd get maybe two shots and then we'd have to uh, abandon it and, and things like that you know you know in a sense that is a failure that's informed the overall goal because then we learn how to you know get around those problems and, and go out and do other things but um because was it was it very like <laughs> assuming trying to get the the footage as you did being quite weather dependent and w was that was that an issue oh, oh absolutely yeah uh, i mean <laughs> we kind of had everybody on standby we'd be like this day looks good we check the weather <laughs> on all these different sites the met office the, the whatever the shipping forecast what have you and the and well, the English weather's so reliable, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then we'd, we'd be lined up on the dock side, ready to get out on the boat. Then the wind would, you know, change like that. And then it'd be, all right, shoot's abandoned. We're, we're going to have to, we're going to have to pull it for today. Um, what's your availability next week? It was that, it was, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but which was very challenging um, to try and navigate that and navigate people's availabilities, you know, because everyone's, you know, working. A couple of actors had different jobs going on and things like that. So, mm -hmm. so they'd, uh, they'd be off filming something else and then, We'd have to try and get them back um, because it took three years of, of, of filming each summer out on the water. So, so they did an incredible job, really, that, that they managed to be able to, you know, keep those blocks free in order to, to help this production. You know, yeah. we're very grateful that they did. Yeah, oh, it's, it, ugh, it's, so, it's so incredible, I guess. And I think I, I, lo I love the phrase there you talk about, about failure being that path to success. And I guess it's... I guess especially with with yourself. I get. Did you have, have you faced stuff at uh, being such a young director as well? Was there? Was, did you face challenges as that? Like with getting people on board and buying into into what you're trying to do? Um, actually, I think that was kind of advantageous. Really, yeah. um, I think especially with COVID, I think people were more willing to help because we shot through COVID. People were more willing to kind of help, um, especially kind of with my age. 
they were they were more willing to ha- help than perhaps yeah. they would have been if I was you know sort of 20 30 years older sure um so n- I haven't really faced barriers particularly in, in, in that regard I mean on the first film yeah because I hadn't really proved myself but yeah, but sure. um that there was kind of something to show with that one as like, I did this with no money back when I was a teenager or whatever and, and then yeah. we're doing this one now and, and you know people were really good uh, I didn't really face any kind of with that. even the actors you, you know some of the actors that I'm kind of directing that they're like you know they're, they're older they're in the kind of 60s 70s some yeah. of them uh, you know they've got to take direction from I was about 21 at the time you, you know and they, they took it really well they, they they did it you know but it, it's my job to kind of do that I have to yeah. I have to be in charge and kind of you know not necessarily stamp down authority but but be kind of the authority on yeah. on set because okay okay it's weird Really, can where does that? Because that, that's got there's got to be an element of confidence there. But I, a couple of things here I really want to tap into. One, one, I guess the where does that confidence come from and that self belief for you to at 21 years old have that authority in front of people? Where, where do you think that comes from? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that I really know the answer to be honest. Um, I think it's just something sort of you know buried within my subconscious really that there's a job that needs to be done that I want to do and you know I'm I'm going to try and do that by any means available really and, you know if that means you know taking on that role and, and you know sort of exerting that confidence and that you know that's what I have to do in order to get what I want done so yeah. you know I think it's kind of out of necessity in a way really because I wouldn't describe myself as a particularly you know outgoing you know you know extremely confident kind of person I mm. I, I was I'm fairly reserved but I, I, when I need to be, you know, I can I can kind of affect that personality, I suppose. And I guess is it the fact that you know that this is your dream, your passion, and what you love, and what what you're great at. So there's, like you said, for for you to take that next step, it's got to be that I believe a hundred percent. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And although a lot of it's self taught. I've done something already. I've obviously got a a skill set here that I can just develop, and I'm going to keep growing. So there's just that again. Back there's that self belief that you know I know I know what I'm doing. Even at that young age, you're like I know what I'm doing. I know that I can. I know I can deliver this because I've got a vision for where I want it to go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that that sums it up perfectly. Really, you know, I I know what I want, and I know roughly how I'm going to get it, yeah. and, and that's kind of the, the 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 thread that runs through it. I mean, obviously there's kind of roadblocks in the way. I kind of like. I don't like the stages where kind of I lose control of how things shape up. I kind of like to keep an eye on sort of all different aspects of the, the filmmaking when it's kind of taken out of my hands and, and put into other people's hands. It always kind of, you know, frustrates me. But that's part of the of the experience, really. You know, as a director, you do have to delegate and uh, yeah. and, and give away certain roles to other people to, to, to kind of, you know, do their jobs. OK, I'm just going to say something about one of our sponsors, River Val. The world of cars, vans and minibuses is often a pain point for many of us. The hassle of finding the right vehicle, let alone looking after it, are all more things to add to our lists as busy people. Rivervale's mission is to make motoring manageable, and that's why they provide leasing, purchasing, servicing, and vehicle management. So whether you have one family car or a fleet of vans for your business, Rivervale are your trusted vehicle supplier. Visit www.rivervale.co.uk. Okay, let's jump back to the podcast. What, t- talk to me about imposter syndrome. Again, it's something I, 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 I've talked to people about a lot, but just especially from your perspective, again, like back to your age at 21 years old, it, was there points throughout filming where that you, you suffer from that a bit, it, where you look, at, look around and you've got these seasoned actors, uh, actresses, and looking around going... 21 years old and I'm directing this feature film <laughs> did, 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 did you get affected by that at all or? not on set I think if you allow that to affect you on set you're just going to get swallowed up and, yeah, yeah. and and you know the actors aren't going to have any kind of faith in you as a director so I just don't think that's you know a, a kind of I don't think it's possible to, to think that way on set you have to kind of overcome that um, and yeah that wasn't really something I ever thought on set it, it's more kind of I think when you're when you're offset I think it, it sort of hits in more kind of in the uh Sort of when the film's done, like there was, it was very difficult getting distribution for this film. It, it took a you know a, a long time um, to get it out. What, and I th- what, why was that? Do you think? What, what, what? It's just a difficult time, I think, for films in general. You know, there's been COVID, and there's a whole kind of big shakeup in the industry of 
the viability of cinemas and the, the kind of emergence of streaming as a, as a very dominant sort mm. of form of, uh, of distribution. So, so you know, it's, it's challenging time to navigate. And, mm. um, you, you know, I, I feel like in that time you're seeing these big movies come out. There's been some huge films this year, like Oppenheimer. And, and then before that, there was like Top Gun Maverick and, you know, all, the, all these huge movies. Uh, and you're kind of thinking, well, I've got a film. And, you know, how does it fit into that? It, it's... It, I suppose that is kind of where the imposter syndrome kind of fits in a little bit. But then you have to take a step back and think, look, I, I've accomplished this. I have this movie. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, not necessarily that it's going to compete against those, but it's part of that kind of yeah. landscape. What, what's, what's your... What's your take what you sort of mentioned there about, like, the, you know, with, with streaming and stuff coming in now and stuff like that. You, I can't ever imagine a time where cinema is not going to be like still a, 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 an amazing because it's as much as like it's great to stream things on TV. It's it's about the experience, right, of sitting in a sitting in a cinema and watching a film on a big screen. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's no other experience. I don't think other than theatre that, that kind of comes close. As you're, you're sat in a dark room with a load of strangers you've never met before and you're never going to meet again. Yeah, yeah. It's sharing a kind of communal experience, but at the same time, it's all a different experience of watching this, you know, something up on the big screen. And, and there's just a kind of magic to that, really, which, yeah. you know, would be a terrible shame if that was to disappear. And I don't think it will. I, yeah. I think you know, people are still going to cinema. I try and go to cinema every week you know without fail which i did I, I actually managed to do it more than once a week last year on average which, which i was very pleased with um, yeah. <laughs> but you know it's very important to me that vindication swim would be shown in cinemas on the big screen because that is the, it's just the best way of seeing a movie yeah, especially sure. one like this with the big landscapes and everything like that so you know we, we, we fought hard as a as a production to kind of get that up on the big screen yeah. and, and you know which is why it's fantastic that it's going to be out on the 8th of march international women's day in cinemas uh, around the uk up on the big screen you know it, it's an incredible it's every filmmaker's dream really to have their movie in, in a cinema yeah I, it uh, again going back to that 14 year old boy or 10 year old even and looking and and starting on that dream and that journey sitting where you are now today knowing that in in a month's time, for example, your your film's gonna gonna be on a big screen. That, that, talk to me about the emotions at that, that. How do you feel? Um, I don't really sit down and take the time to think about it. To be honest, it, the, the, it's it's so hectic. There's always you know different things going on. It's, yeah. it's been you know very hectic. Kind of arranging this release has been a lot to do. So I haven't really yet had a time you know a chance to kind of sit down and, and reflect on it. Really, it's all it's all been all kind of all systems go. So. You know, once it's all come out and it'll be out digitally on the 10th of June as, as well. So kind of by July, once it's all kind of been out and, and maybe even September, once the dust has settled a bit, then I think I'll be able to take some time to kind of sit back and, you know, kind of reflect on, on what it's been. Because it's been a long journey. You know, it's been, it's been yeah. almost five years of, of this to get it to where it is today. So, um, you know, I'm incredibly pleased and very yeah. proud of, of, of what not just myself, but everyone on the production has done to get it to this stage. But um I personally, I haven't had time to sit down and think about sure. it any, deep, any more deeply than that. Yeah, okay. Mate. And, and again, another thing I'd really love to touch on, like, like you said, it's such a long process to make a film of this, and and navigating, I guess, things like COVID, like you said, that's all come in, I guess, I guess w w was a, a difficult period to be able to, to, to be able to still film from during that time was that was there points where you had to stop filming completely or oh yeah we got shut down because of the lockdowns i think three times yeah. um which was a pain because you know we were right in the, the midst of production at that yeah. point and that caused it to go over schedule by like a year uh yeah. eventually because that i mean there was that big lockdown the first yeah, time yeah, where we, we didn't film anything during that i think we filmed right up to when it was announced and then started up again like, as soon as it had yeah, ended yeah. but um it, it, it changed the way we filmed, really, because um, at least at first, because we had to have smaller crews and and less people on set. Luckily, we'd shot the, the big scene with all the extras just before um, Christmas 2019. So um, we had that one in the can, which was great because yeah. that would have been really hard to um, to do because a lot of the actors in the film uh, in those scenes, we know older people and things like that. So, you know, you're putting them at a higher risk, I suppose, by... Yeah you know doing that but um filming out at sea was good because it's all outdoors limited number of people you can't you know we didn't have a, a cruise liner to, to keep the crew on or anything <laughs> like that so it, it was a very small production in, in that sense when we were out there on the water and, and most of that was shot sort of after covid um, and that was the best the best stuff to kind of be filming amazing and then i guess one thing for me like it's 
maintaining that with, with, with different ob- obstacles being thrown at you during that time, mate, maintaining that that vision and focus and s- belief that I'm going to make this film and it's going to uh, I'm going to finish it and it's going to come up. But was there was there any points during the period of filming over the three to five years that that you just feel oh, I'm never going to get this done? Was that ever an option to go like we're just going to have to pack up and and think it was that ever a discussion with you and your dad or what was it like? No matter what, we're going to get this. Uh, that was a discussion after the first day of filming. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, w- w- that was the w- the first scene we shot was out at sea. Um, the weather probably wasn't ideal um, f- 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 for really, you know, d- d- doing it out, out on the water. So we'd, we'd all gone out there. We'd had all the actors and, and, and the crew. One of the actors had awful seasickness. So he was he was out of it from, you know, the, the first five minutes. We had to take him out of the boat. He thought we were going back into the harbour because you know, he had really bad motion sickness. But we were like, oh, we've got to get the rest of the shot. So he had to sit on the boat for three hours, you know, throwing up while, while we got the rest of the scenes done. And then uh, <laughs> wow. John Locke, who's Mercedes Coates, I mean, he was such a trooper that day because uh, he was also seasick. But he'd be thrown up one side of the boat, then turning to deliver his lines to the camera the next side. <laughs> it, it, it was just a nightmare that day. It was really, really hard. It was really challenging. Um and then I mean, we basically we shot pretty much nothing. None of it ended up in the actual film that day. Um, but we we came back in and we were like, "Jesus, this is difficult." You know, how the hell are we gonna <laughs> are we gonna do this? And um, luckily, we found these incredible seasickness tablets, which um, you know they worked to treat. Nobody got sick again. And um, we we sort of evaluated the weather better and went out again. I think it was a few weeks later. Um, once the weather had kind of calmed down a bit and it was flat. We shot loads. We had, you know, tons of footage in the can, and um, from there we realised, oh, you know, we can do this, and uh, we carried on. Wow, I think it's mad, isn't it? Like you, you, you go back to that point. <laughs> I was that question, and you go, yeah, day one, <laughs> we're, we're sitting there going, am I gonna? Are we even gonna be able to to carry on and and do this? And again, I guess back to that word again, resilience, right? Just going. And actually, problem solving, looking at an, looking at an issue, again, uh, uh, it's great to have this conversation because looking at looking at relating so much of what I do to business and, and mm. a lot of our listeners from entrepreneurs running running their own businesses. Look, as, as entrepreneurs and business owners, we're always going to face roadblocks. And there's always going to be things in the way that you know I've, this is just a problem, and I've got to solve it. How do I solve that problem? Whether it be finding um, sickness tablets for, <laughs> for, for people or whatever that looks like, it's just trying to never and always, always trying to keep a vision on that end goal of what you want to achieve and where how you want to get there. This is just a, a thing in the in the road, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there was kind of an ethos. On, on the film um, of kind of we would think what would Mercedes do you, you know because she was such a resilient determined yeah, person yeah, yeah. And, and you know everything came back to her because the movie was obviously uh, about her so kind of having that mindset I think really helped uh, I know it helped Kirsten a lot when she was out in the water you know filming she, she, mm. she would have these kind of moments of uh, you know you're out there two two miles out from the coast in, in you know dark cold waters and you know you've got to kind of think what would Mercedes do yeah. and the answer is she would carry on you, you know and I think that kind of informed the whole cast and crew and, and our ethos behind the film. I mean, it certainly you know informed my decisions as well. Love that. Love because actually, like you said, it's, it's what you allude to there a little bit as well is everyone buying into I guess a culture that you're sort of creating within the within the production, mm. right? Like again, back to busy be the the power and the strength of a, a strong culture within a company and an organisation and a, a project whatever it is that we're we're doing if everyone buys into that and everyone buys into that ethos and what an amazing thing I guess like like you said to take to adopt that mentality of taking on Mercedes I guess being inspired by her story that everyone's buying into that like we're going to get over this hurdle she would have done that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was, you know, it, it just brings everything back to her, which was always yeah. an important thing because yeah. the film has to honour her and, and what she yeah. did. And I think if everybody has that mindset or at least tries to get into that mindset, then, you know, you're kind of on the road to success in that regard, I think, yeah. which, um, which, you know, it was nice to see. Yeah, I love it. Well, look, we, we mentioned about, obviously, this coming out on International Women's Day, which is, you know, um, which is incredible, really, and, and especially like you said about a thing. I'd be keen to 
with the challenges, obviously, looking at her story and the challenge she would have faced in her 20s, I guess, uh, what's your take on where we are in society today? Like, how things have, obviously, we've come a long, long way since then, right? Mm. But um, are we, how close are we to sort of achieving gender equality? Is it still, what's your thoughts on that as a society? Um, that's a difficult question. Um, I mean, we've obviously come a long way since Mercedes' mm. time in, in, in the twenties, um, but there's a lot of work to be done still. You, you know, um, I mean, film directing in itself, you know, that's a, a very kind of male-dominated mm. arena. You know, obviously, I'm a, I'm a man making the film, but um, you know, there's been a lot of fantastic women that we've worked with on the production. Mm. You know, who, who've been kind of you know very important within their their roles as kind of you know the heads of certain things like Nicola who handled distribution or. You know, Kirsten was an exec producer on the movie as well as acting in it. So, so you, you know, there, there was a lot of input from some some really fantastic women on this uh, on this movie. And um, you know, I mean, that was obviously very important because it's about someone like Mercedes. Mm. Um, uh, you know, you kind of need that angle for sure. But um, yeah, I think there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, hopefully, Vindication Swim will in some way contribute towards that. Mm. You know, sort of goal of achieving you know equality. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that I can say anything more than that, really. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, I, I hope it at least adds to discussion, if not it encourages some kind of positive change. Yeah. I, com I, I, I mean, look, I'll, it's, it's, I, I, I completely agree that there's, of course, and thankfully, we, we've moved, <laughs> we've progressed hugely since, 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 since mm. the 20s. And it was great, like I said, I think you, you, I know we sort of mentioned offline, I think you really, you, you really get an idea from the movie of the struggles that she was up against in in the twenties, right? Um, we obviously have progressed, but I've I've read a book recently or last year called Invisible Women, um, and actually shows how far we still are away mm. from from achieving equality. I've had a couple of people on here. I know like from Lewis Football Club, for example, um, they're the first and only team within the football league that pay women and men the same oh really wow. yeah and you, and you look at uh, things like that like we're just we're still although we're moving in the right direction it's still so so far to yeah go. yeah definitely. um and I, I think especially from watching the film and what you're highlighting and where uh, we're, uh, we're going to release it like you said i hope i think it's going to it is it's a great thing to be able to move it in that right direction definitely mm, yeah i think especially with women in sport as well there's a mm. big inequality there um which you know it is improving but very yeah. slowly um yeah. and obviously mercedes is a swimmer yeah. you, you know the hope is to kind of encourage more women to you know go out and and, and swim mm. and, and, and the, you know kind of achieve similar things to what she achieved really mm. um you know, I mean, that would be fantastic. You know, as a director, you always want your film to inspire people. So if, if yeah. it can inspire just one person, then I think you've succeeded in, in, in that goal, really. Love that. I, I, I completely, 100%, I, like I said, having the privilege of watching it, 100%, it will just, the story as a whole is, is, is phenomenal. Like you said, I think from a, people love that sort of underdog story as well. Mm. And love the, the way that, you know, someone's going to face a struggle and, and any great storyteller is able to, I guess, I, I guess share that share that journey like you say you feel certainly from my point of view you felt like you're on the journey with her you want to and, and you're you're championing her on every almost every stroke aren't you you watching especially like when you know she's facing them as she gets stung by a jellyfish and yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? and all all them things you sort of going you're in the middle of the uh, in the english channel and you're doing that and uh, and just that resilience that determination is su is such an inspiring story it's brilliant and oh thank you yeah no i i, I loved it i think look, oh, moving on, as you you sort of mentioned a little bit about steven spielberg but as, as a creator and a film as a director who, who else sort of what work influences you the most i guess talk, talk to me a little bit about that yeah, I mean Spielberg is definitely one. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's one of the all-time greats. Yeah, of um, course. Jaws, especially, is one of my my favourite films, and it's, you know, it inspired a lot of indications for him. I, I studied Jaws relentlessly before we before we made it, and, and see how he shot out at sea and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from Spielberg, David Lean um, is another huge huge inspiration, particularly Lawrence of Arabia and his um, 
his kind of his epic movies. But I, I love Brief Encounter and his other movies as well. I mean, there's just so many classics that he, that he made. Um, his Dickens adaptations, just everything. Because um, Vindicator Swimmer, obviously, there's the black and white and the color. So yeah. you know that kind of the, the world of David Lean definitely uh, was a huge inspiration on that one. It's a big inspiration for kind of anything mm. that I do in terms of film, really. Um, and some others. I mean, Johnny Depp. I've always been a big fan of. So you know, I grew up with Pirates of the Caribbean. I was a big fan of that as a child. So. Yeah. That again, you know, it's set out at sea. You can kind of see there's a little bit of influence there, I suppose, yeah, from uh, yeah. th- th- that, that into Vindication Swim. So yeah, he's another big one. Um, yeah, I'd say they're probably my, my, my top three, really, yeah, in terms okay. of uh, people that inspire me, yeah. What about if you, uh, actors that you'd love to work with, actors, actresses that you'd love to work with, any any top ones there? Ah, oh, this is a difficult one. Um, it, I, I always think, you know, the project has to be a, sort of appropriate for the... Uh, for the actor yeah. really um, I mean Depp is obviously someone I'd like to work with but um, yeah I mean, I mean other than that I, I don't really kind of think too much about sort of you know my dream cast or whatever because it, it you know it, it's always different there's some fantastic actors that people haven't necessarily heard of yeah. that you, you know given the opportunity you know I would love to give a voice to like Kirsten in Vindication Swim I mean you know yeah. she, she's not this is her debut screen role she hasn't had other film credits but you know she did a fantastic job she was incredible yeah. to work with and, and you know things like that so I, I, as a filmmaker, I, I like to kind of, you, you know, help other people as well, as opposed to just, you, you know, wanting to work with the big guys and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and girls all the time. So, you know, I haven't, I, I don't know I don't necessarily yeah. the answer to that. It would be who's right for the role, but I suppose. I guess, I guess then, because, and that's a really uh, great answer, because is, is it more than about the project in the film that you want to make, as opposed to who... And then who's going to fit that role as opposed to, to I really want to work with them. I'm going to create a film by, for, for that actor, mm-hmm. for example. Is it not? Uh, um, it's more more about the project and that that you want to. Yeah, well, for for me at least, I think it should always be about the story yeah. and, and what you're doing, and then how. If if someone like I don't know Brad Pitt fits into that, then fantastic. You know, you can go and approach him, and if you have however many million that you need to do that, then <laughs> yeah, yeah. then that's great. But um. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's always got to be about the story and um, and who fits into that and, and, and who taps into that. Because I think when you're doing a project, you know, for an actor, essentially, as a vehicle for, for them, then, you know, it's always kind of be a bit cliched, I think, and a bit yes. kind of uh, unoriginal because, yeah. you know, you're, you're basing it off of what you've seen them do before. Whereas like, it's always interesting when an actor is, is kind of cast you know, a kind of against type and they're doing something they haven't really mm. done before because it's a new sort of role and you wouldn't necessarily expect them to be in that kind of... I think that's when things get kind of exciting. Yeah. This is Geo. Geo runs a scarf company. Geo doesn't see the need for telecoms. Everybody uses mobiles now. But can a mobile really be a business phone? Geo is having coffee with a client, Gabby. Well, actually, Geo prefers acacia leaf tea. But what happens when someone calls? It could be a big new deal. Surely it would be rude to take the call? But many people hate leaving messages. They may just call a competitor instead. What can Geo do? The answer is simple. Turn the mobile into a business phone. With the GoGiraffe app, Geo can quickly transfer the call. Or before the meeting, Geo can simply use the app to divert calls. No more missed calls, lost deals, or unhappy customers. Turn your mobile into a business phone today. Go Giraffe. I've, got, I've listened to a really interesting podcast with um, Matthew McConaughey, actually, mm. talking about... Because um, he was very typecast, wasn't he, before he sort of done uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Very typecast in that role. And he kept, and he actually, I think he, he, he said that he turned down... Uh, he was offered another similar role to that, you know, shirtless guy with surfer know, kind of surfer thing. Yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly that. And and it, he was offered like fourteen million or something, mm. and he ended up turning it down because he was not, and and it didn't work for like nearly two or three years because he just kept turning down these roles because he wanted to be taken as a serious actor. With it. And then he obviously, I think he won the Oscar, didn't he, for Dallas Buyers yeah, Club? Did, and, yeah, and and that and. In, in, incredible to like like you said that it's it's more about uh, about the story and what you want to get out of as opposed to and, and look, me I'm a, as a storyteller even with the podcast and similar to like you said I love the fact of thinking that just having conversations and and if I if this resonates with one person and it inspires them to go oh, God, I'd love to 
do that. And mm. and and like your story as a whole, even at, at such a young age, what you've achieved so like, in such a short space of time is 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 inspiring in itself. But ultimately, for me, it's the it's the following your dreams and something that you're clearly you can tell when you talk about film. You can tell when you talk about vindication swim the passion that comes across. And if anything, I want for my kids is that. You know, I just, you want them to mm. want them to follow passion because, and drive. Yeah, yeah passion, just, some, just something that lights them up. Because I think, as a, unfortunately, as adults, we get to a point where potentially we, you know, we stop dreaming. Mm. Like you said, at, at ten years old, you, I wanted to be a footballer, and you, and you know, you want to be a filmmaker. You've, and we get to different points in our life. Society gets older, and you go, oh, that's not achievable. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you know, almost lose sight of that. And I think that just seeing your journey where you are now and what you're achieving and stuff and it's such a a great thing for younger generation for people to look at and, and aspire to i guess which is which is amazing yeah i mean i hope it is you yeah. know um inspiring people is you know it's kind of a magical thing and if it can inspire people then you know that that's absolutely fantastic yeah awesome look talk, talking about that what's what's uh, What's next for you, like with the with, with the next project? Have you got an idea of films you want to make, or what, what? Where you go with a production company? What, what's, what's your goals, and where where do you go from there? Yeah, so I mean, we've kind of got a slate of uh, of, of projects that are kind of at various stages of development at the moment. Um, there's there's one we've got a script finished, and uh, that's kind of all packaged, and we're going to start pitching that to uh, to some film financiers and things, and, and try and get that one off the ground as Vindication Swim is coming out. So that's one of the uh, one of the aims. There's another story we've got, which is a World War Two set film. Um, so th th there's a th there's a whole kind of range of, of movies. The one we've got written the script for that's like a true crime um, thriller type thing. Because I I want to do something different to Vindication Swim. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, it'll be nice to kind of. Uh, you know, that's why Spielberg is such a big in in inspiration to me because he he always kind of pushes the boundaries of what he does. He never does the same movie twice. It's always it's always something new, yeah, yeah. and 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 I think that's just as a creative person, it's just fascinating to to kind of reimagine yourself essentially mm -hmm. and, and evolve creatively. I think that's you know the goal really. So so all the projects are very different um, and very different to Vindication Swim and what I've done before. So stand away from the water for for the next one. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can persuade anyone to go back in there um, who worked on vindication somebody. So it'd have to be a whole new cast. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I think I'd rather keep out of it for a little while as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Well, look, it sounds like some exciting, exciting stuff coming up. And um, look, I, I, as we're coming to sort of the end, there's a couple of things I wanted to uh, just finish off with. And I guess look, one of the main things for me is is on the podcast is talking and defining what success looks like mm. to people right? so I'm, I'm keen with in where where you are now what you've achieved so far as a young alien we're talking a month before that you've got feature film coming out what how, how do you define success that's a good question um i think a lot of people define success as kind of a, a monetary thing you know what kind of a wealth-based thing but um which obviously is an, an aspect of success um but you know there's a lot of other aspects of success for me personally as well you know there's sort of uh emotional success and you kind of you know your mental well-being that you're mm -hmm. fulfilled and kind of at peace if you like with yourself and uh, you know satisfied really um you know physical success you're fit and healthy and, and you, you know that mm -hmm. kind of, that kind of thing and uh yeah, I suppose kind of a social aspect of success as well, that you're surrounded by good people, friends, family, um, you know, colleagues who are all supportive of you and likewise you're supportive of them and, you know, you're kind of helping each other to get to where you want to be. Um, so I suppose success for me really is a combination of all those different things um, mm. combined. I don't think there's any kind of one definition of success. I think they all bleed into one another. Mm. And once you've kind of found that satisfaction within your life, then I think that, you know, that has to be success, surely. Mm. Will you, will you allow yourself that moment? You think when you're sitting in the in the cinema, surrounded by a packed audience, Vindication swims on there. Will you allow yourself that moment? Do you think to sit there and go, wow, I've done this? Ah, uh, possibly. It'll probably be after the screening. I mean, every filmmaker talks about how before their movie is shown, while it's being shown, they all feel physically sick. Because, really? Well, it's such a personal thing. Yeah, you, you it's know, it's, it's been like my sort of child for, for five years. And to, to have it <laughs> then out there for everyone to see, I mean, it's very daunting, really. Yeah, um, sure. 
it's a scary thing but the the, the initial reactions have been fantastic and you know hopefully people you know will love it when it comes out and and, and enjoy it so um I mean, the first screening, yeah, I'll be feeling physically sick. I may, I may have to leave. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. But, yeah. but after that, once it's been out and everything, then, then yeah, I mean, you, you know, we'll see how the release goes and hopefully, you know, it goes really well. But, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with, with how it's shaped up and how the journey's been so far. So I'm just looking forward to the next step, really. Yeah, amazing. And, like, and again, such an important thing, I think, for me like, to look at because sometimes again back to that sort of assess point so many times that we go what well, my, my success or my happiness and fulfillment comes from that point mm. where i've achieved a goal um and actually it's so important i guess to when when it's all out and when you are sitting there reflecting looking at that journey and even those tough points like how much you've enjoyed that journey of putting it together and creating something that has come to to fruition, I guess it's it's such an important message for me. I think to not delay our happiness and mm. to, to a point in where goals are achieved, but actually in the process of doing it, and um, and it must be like you said, almost as as being your baby that you've seen it develop from that initial idea and them initial discussions into something that actually we are gonna now it's come to life, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, the journey is a very important thing um you know you have to have happiness kind of within the journey of it because yeah. the journey is the majority of of, of what you're going to be doing really mm. you know and, and then i guess there's also the challenge of defining where that pinnacle of success actually comes you, yeah. you know is it when the film is released or is it when it starts making money at the box office or it, yeah. you know is it this is it that so there's lots of different kind of you know points but but, but at which one is that you know a success mm. necessarily um so i think if you just enjoy the whole journey you, you know then that's where success, that's where satisfaction is, I yeah. think, really. Uh, have you, over the, uh, like you said, five years of, of doing it, would you, are you looking back now, prior to its release, and going, you know what, I've, I've enjoyed that, uh, that, that process of seeing this come together? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, I had the time of my life making this film. It was, it was fantastic, yeah. It was, it was an incredible experience, and, you know, yeah. one that I'll, I'll definitely, you know, cherish. You yeah. know, it's, 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 been, it's been amazing. I've worked with some fantastic people and, you know, had some incredible kind of experiences of, of filming out at sea has been all you know that was that was great then the post-production at, at warner brothers you know we never anticipated that it was going to go there when we were making the film to begin with um so to, you know to walk into those halls and they've got the posters the movies that they've done like there's harry potter there's uh you know mission impossible and there's all, all these different posters they're all signed by like tom cruise and, and and you know big actors and stuff so you know to have my film done by those people and, and then they put all the sound in and the the, the the color grading and stuff you know it's just fantastic so yeah. you, you know there's been a lot of kind of you know moments where you, along the way that have just you know been incredible there's been a lot of challenges but i think that you know there's kind of even greater satisfaction when you overcome a challenge to, to then you know turn it into a success so yeah I, i've loved the journey and you know i'm just excited to see where it will go next and then you know future journeys on future films amazing amazing look last one we're going to just finish off if i i, I, I want to ask you if any aspiring directors out there people wanting to get into film what looking back if you could go back and talk to your 10 year old self what, what what advice would you would you give yourself um i think my advice for myself and for everybody would be to you know not get caught up with kind of everything else that's going on around you kind of develop a sort of tunnel vision and, and just go for it with what you want to do and, and go out and, and just do it really you know cameras are so accessible now you can make a movie on your iphone you know they can shoot in 4k so, you know, just get a group of friends together and go and make a film or, or, or do do whatever, you know, however, whatever you, means you have available, you know, it's, it's so accessible. So for anyone who wants to make a film, you know, the means are kind of within their, their, their grasp, I suppose. So, so at any level, you can you can make something. So that would be my advice was to be, you know, just go and do it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't or anything like that. What, what a great way to finish. Um Mate, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on and, um, and thanks for having hearing, me. hearing your story and and listen, I wish you every success with the with the film. It really thanks very much. For, on a on a personal level, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic and I'm I'm sure it's gonna be so well received by so many people and I I I'm so intrigued to continue watching your growth and success and, and more films that, that, that you're gonna bring out, I'm sure. And um Listen, thanks so much for your time, mate. It's been it's been awesome. No, thank you very much. Yeah, and if anyone listening wants to catch the movie, it'll be out on the 8th of March, International Women's Day, in cinemas uh, around the UK. Amazing.
amazing. And that, sir, as they say, is a wrap. wrap. <laughs>